Hello again everybody. Right, should we get paint in this bonnet then? Now we're almost ready to start at least preparing for paint and perhaps putting some primer on. Now, I am going to try painting it in the garage here. It's not really ideal conditions. Um, obviously, for spraying paint, you should have good airflow. Um, but I am going to close the garage door, partly because I don't want to get any overspray on any neighbours' vehicles or anything like that, any drift going and settling on other people's cars. And I want to try and control any fumes and smell and stuff so I don't upset any neighbours. There shouldn't be much. We're only doing a bonnet. So it's only a relatively small panel. So we'll be spraying small amounts in short bursts. And it's quite good that the weather's poor today. Obviously, you don't really want wet, humid conditions for painting. But it does mean no one will be outside in their garden nearby. So. If there is a bit of smell, it shouldn't matter desperately much. Anyhow, the first thing to do, I think, is to clear up some of this mess and try and get rid of some of the dust. This garage is used for all sorts of things, really, as you've probably seen, from woodwork, metalwork, sort of car repairs and bits and pieces. So there's all sorts of muck and dust and, and stuff in here. I'm not going to go too mad because uh, I could spend all day trying to clear it out. Really, I suppose I should take everything out and uh, sweep down and hoover up and maybe even damp down the floor a little bit. But uh, I'm clearly not going to do that because uh, I just haven't got the time. Uh, by the time I've done it, probably the weekend would be over and I'd have to put everything back in and everything would get messy again and uh, we'd be off uh, again having to start a new next time. So. I'm just going to clear up sort of to a very rough standard, maybe get rid of the worst. And I need to clear some working space as well because I've got tools everywhere, as you can see. Well, I'm going to try now to get a rag in here and clean up in this channel as best I can. Just going to use some uh, mess to do that. It's basically sort of oily mankiness that's in there. So the mess should certainly help a little bit anyway and it'll evaporate pretty quickly uh, to allow me to carry on. Now I'm going to start spraying the underneath first because um, you won't see that and uh, I'm a bit of a practice on that but I'm just going to crudely mask off the citron symbol on the front. I'm not entirely sure how that's stuck on. There's no fixings to get to anywhere. I suspect it's literally stuck on with some sort of adhesive so I'm not going to try and take that off. 
but I don't want any overspray to go on it. Now, though this uh, underside is still looking pretty rough, I think it's probably about as prepared as it's going to get. I could, could spend hours uh, filling in all the little imperfections and sanding and re-sanding and refilling and trying to get everything nice and smooth. But uh, none of it's going to be seen. And uh, I really want to concentrate on the top surface of the bonnet. So I think the only thing remaining to do before we can start to paint is to uh, give it uh, a coat of panel wipe. So this is what I've got. Um, it's arse colour panel wipe. Um, now I'm not painting the bonnet arse colour. I'm not sure what arse colour is, but uh, I'm sure it'll do for the white that we're using. As you can see, it's uh, pretty nasty stuff. So I'm going to make sure I wear some gloves and I'm going to pop my respirator on to use it as well. Well, as you can see, I've assembled all the bits and pieces I've bought to do this. Uh, now, I have recently watched a video by a fella called Far Away who does a lot of uh, spraying of cars. And he did a video comparing cheap and expensive um, paint guns. And he was comparing a gun that cost $700 with a gun that cost $150, which he classed as a cheap gun. Now this is a Sealy gun and I got it off eBay for £16, brand new. So uh, I guess that's a super cheap gun. So I, I don't know how that's going to perform, but we'll see, we'll see. Now I've also got here the Citroen, you can see it's Blanco Corfu, which is the correct colour for the van. I've got some thinners for it there. Also got some white etch primer. I bought quite a lot of that because, you know, I can prime other things with it. And I've got 1K etch thinner. So like single pack etch thinner. But I'm pretty sure one's got a red lid and one's got a black lid. I don't think there's a difference there. I think that's just different coloured lids. Also got some uh, calibrated paint mixing cups. Some 190 micron filters. Got my respirator, of course, which is going to be pretty important. Haven't got any stirring sticks, but I thought what I could use is probably a cable tie to stir the paint. So I've got some of them ready. Now, one thing I have read is that uh, it's a good idea to spray some thinners first through a brand new gun because there might be some coatings inside to prevent corrosion that you just need to wash out before we start painting so I'll be sure to do that right now as I said I've not used one of these before but I've had a look on to internet and I believe this knob here is the fan control this one here controls the amount of paint that flows through and I believe this one controls the volume of air obviously this is where you connect the air hose up now, I also want to rig up something where I can rest it where I'm not using it so it doesn't fall over. Uh, how can we do that? Well, that's pretty crude, but it should work. I've just clamped this bit of wood with a cutout in it onto the workmate, and I can just drop it on there when I'm not using it without spilling all the paint. Right, let's connect it up to the compressor hose. need to go too tight. Fire up the compressor. Now I've been reading online and they say between 25 to 29 psi so I've set the regulator to just below 30. Let's just try, oh, of course got to turn the uh, air on haven't we to get anything to work. Let's just try the gun. So let's drop into 
maybe about 20. So if I wind that up just a little, maybe not that much. Maybe take a touch more off. I reckon that'll do. So as I said earlier, I'm just going to put a little bit of thinners in the gun and just spray it through just to clear anything that's in the gun from the manufacturing or storage is what I've heard best thing to do. We'll give it a try. Clear a bit and go and get a nice cup of tea. Well, I'm back in the garage. I've uh, got some tea. Don't worry, I won't be drinking it while I'm spraying. But uh, I've got my calibrated measuring cup here. And I've just checked and it says you can thin the base coat up to 15%. Well, that means you don't really need to thin it, but you can if you like. Or what? I don't know. But I'm going to try it with just a little bit of thinner in, maybe maybe half of 15%. So I think if I fill it up to the 200 mark with paint and then to the 215 mark, that'll be half of 15%. That'll be 7.5%, I suppose. Hmm. And then I've got some paint filters, so I can filter it into the spray gun. I'm going to check the pattern probably by spraying a bit on the wall there. From what I've read, we should get uh, what they call a football type pattern. And what they mean by that is an American football, I think, uh, rather than an English football, which would be round, wouldn't it? Um, but the videos I watched are American, so uh, they're, they're thinking of a rugby ball type shape, really. So we'll try that and uh, see how we get on. If it all works, I'll just go straight to spraying the bonnet over here. But first, I'm going to finish my tea. Well, as you might see, the, uh, the spray pan is very coarse and grainy. Um, I've tried adjusting everything up and down and it... Uh, Either nothing comes out or it comes out very grainy. Whether I need to add some more thinners, I'm not sure. I'll have a quick Google and come back to you. Hmm, I'm not finding a great deal that helpful on uh, Google for some reason. I thought you could find most things on there. Anyway, I'm going to have another go. I've got the air pressure turned up a bit more, which seems to be helping a bit. I'm going to try and spray some on the bonnet, because I've got it perhaps as good as it seems I'm going to get it. I wonder if I haven't thinned it enough or I've thinned it too much, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to try putting one coat on and see what happens. Yeah, I'm really not too happy with this at all. Look how it's like uh, some sort of textured coating, isn't it? It's uh, that's not the effect we're going for. Oh dear, more googling, I think. Right. Well, everything I'm reading is indicating the paint's too thick and the air pressure is too low. So I've now gone properly to town on the thinner and had a mix up in there, and I've turned the air pressure up. A little bit more again 
and uh, we're now way beyond what the data sheet says we should be spraying it at but uh, let's see if it's uh, any better <laughs> say that is starting to uh, get better. It's still a bit orange peely but uh, I think we're starting to get there. Yeah far from perfection but uh, improving. Anyway I'm going to let that harden up for a bit before giving it another coat. I want to get rid of uh, these areas of rust proofing before I put the base coat on obviously. So uh, there's a bit of covering to do yet. Oh, I must admit the uh, HVLP gun with the water-based paint in it is much harder to use than I remember the uh, siphon feed gun with the cellulose paint that I used all those years ago, but uh, maybe that's just a bit of bad luck. Right, let's try again. Well that I think is the primer done for the backside so I'm going to let that properly harden off while I have some lunch and then hopefully that will be dry enough to flip it over and I'm going to probably go over that front of that bonnet with um, maybe something like a, I don't know what I've got really, I think the, the next grade I've got is 800 grit, seems a bit of a jump from the um, was it 80 grit emery paper that I rubbed it down with to 800 but uh, that's what I've got so uh, I've got to use what I've got really um, I might have something in between but it'll be sandpaper I'm not sure sandpaper is really going to be quite the thing anyway I'll see see what I can do with what I've got well I've had my lunch and this is still slightly tacky. I certainly wouldn't want to be turning it over and spraying the other side. It would stick to the fabric. So I'm actually going to try and bake it on a little bit with the hot air gun. That should work, shouldn't it? Let's uh, see how we go. Obviously, you going to put the hot air gun too close because that would uh, strip the paint. So yeah, let's see what happens.
Well, I think that's dry enough now to turn over. Right, well, she's turned over. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a going over by hand with the 800 grit paper. Right, now I've got to properly mask up that Citroen emblem. Right, let's get some primer on this side. Well, I've had my dinner and this primer has hardened off quite nicely. So uh, I reckon we're safe to flip it over and put a base coat on the underneath. Right, oh, let's give it a go, I suppose. Well, there we go. It's uh, a little bit orange peely, you'll be able to see, but uh, that doesn't matter because you, you'll not see the underneath at all. We'll try and get the top side a little better if we can. But anyway, I've left it to dry for quite a while and I've given it a little go over with the hot air gun to try and cook it off a little bit. It's uh, perfectly dry to the touch, so I think it's okay to flip it over and then we'll tackle that primer with a fresh bit of uh, wet and dry to try and flatten it off a bit. You can still see some scratches and things in it. Right, let's uh, give her a wipe over with a nice new tack rag. Coat now. Well there we go, I've pushed it to one side, I'm going to call it a night for tonight and let that harden up overnight, then we'll give it uh, another rub down with 800 grit in the morning and see what it looks like. It's quite dull at the moment and there is a little bit of orange peel still, I don't know if you can see that. But I suppose, given what we're working with, it's not too bad. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.